My brothers and sisters, would you please bow? With the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts together, be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Actions speak louder. pretty well-known, very common sense idea, concept that we're all very well familiar with. But I'd like to look at this in a, a little bit more uh, depth today. Uh, today's more of a work session <laughs> than, a, than, a, than a sermon. Uh, so I would ask that you would indulge with me as we, we, we dig into this a little bit. Um, for the last... Uh, year or so, I've had the privilege and pleasure of developing a, a better, deeper, a renewed relationship with my younger daughters, Jessica and Sarah in particular. And um, in the course of our interactions with them from week in and week out, um, one of the things that we're, we're trying to instill in them is that patterns of behavior over time are what tell you and demonstrate to you whether a person is of character and worth, right? I mean, that's common sense stuff. But they seem to keep picking these loser boyfriends. <laughs> I'm serious. I mean, you know, they get these guys, and I'm going like, girls, come on. Where did you get that? <laughs> I mean, no. yeah, come on, and and I and I said it's not about the big things. It's about the little things that they do and say day in and day out that tells you and gives you a a better perspective on what kind of character. Come on, uh, because it is it is that over time patterns of respectful and um, considerate kinds of things that happen in the day-to-day -day interactions help you to build trust, right? Confidence, credibility, friendship, love that then has depth and substance, right? Amen. Okay, so I'm Realizing that in those dialogues with my daughters as, and trying to instill those kinds of values in them, I'm recognizing that today's texts are also uh, encouraging us to delve into this arena, into this area of self-assessment. Self-assessment is really is the goal today. Because I don't have any control over what you do or say or how you, all I can do is work on me, right? You know, the, the, I can't worry about the, the speck in your eye <laughs> when I know I got a beam in my own, right? Okay, so, so, the, so the challenge is how can I nurture on a horizontal and vertical level the kinds of long-term behavioral patterns of behavior that build trust and confidence? and credibility, because actions speak louder than words. Okay, I'm going to toss out some questions at you, okay? <clears throat> These are declarative statements that we hear and or say a lot, all right? So bear with me. I love you. I care about you. You can count on me. I love everybody. <laughs> I'm a Christian. <laughs> a lot of words. But how is in each of those declarative statements, how do we make those statements real. I really 
love the 23rd Psalm. We're all so very familiar with the 23rd Psalm. We've heard it so many times. We've said it. We've recited it. We, you know, ad nauseum to the point that we t oftentimes will take these kind of texts for granted. But one thing I ask that you would take note of in the 23rd Psalms is throughout the first 90% of the psalm, all of the verbs in the Psalm 23 are in the present tense. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Okay, he makes me lie down. He restores my soul. Even though I walk, I will fear. No fear. He comforts me. Present tense. He prepares a table. Everything is present tense. And the re as as I look at that relationship that apparently David in the writing of Psalm 23 must have had with God. That relationship that David and God had with each other had already well established itself to the point that everything, that all these praises that he's declaring are present tense. I'm taking this stuff. I know this is, God prepares. Now, in order for David to say God prepares a table before me in the presence of man, in order for him to declare that, make that as a declarative sentence, he had to have already experienced a whole bunch of preparations that happened before. A pattern of God having done over and over again the restoring, the making me lie down, the, the, the providing over and over so that in the present I got peace. Right now I ain't worried about it because there's a pattern wouldn't that be great for us to be able to have that in our relationships and on our jobs and to have a, a pattern of, of interactions and, and uh, interpersonal dynamics such that, oh, I don't have to worry about her. I, I, we, we're cool. <laughs> we're good. And to be able to have that horizontally with the people around us and with God, like David and, and God had, it's declared in Psalm 23. To, to be at peace with total confidence and trust in God. To be able to just make a whole bunch of present tense statements about it. That's just, I'm, 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 I'm sitting there, I'm comfortable writing this up. And at the end of Psalm 23, he then projects at the very last verse, projects into the future. Therefore, goodness and mercy shall follow me. That's the one place where he starts to anticipate into the future. Because I am so confident in the now, I ain't even worried about tomorrow. It's going to be all right. Because goodness and mercy, because we need both of them. Each one is statistically important for us. It's good to have the goodness, but every now and then we need some mercy too. You know what I mean? <laughs> you need both. We need both of them. Uh, following us all the days of our lives. All right, so now we have the gospel lesson. Here in the 10th chapter of the, of the gospel, Jesus has been in the city of Jerusalem for three or four months. According to the, the previous chapters up to this point, he's been in Jerusalem teaching and ministering and healing and making his presence very well known. Come on, for four months, folk have been observing what he does. And these folk, I'm sorry, these trifling folk come up to him. I'm, I'm sorry. It, you know, they come up to Jesus and he's in the temple, and they come up to him and they say, look, tell us plainly, are you the Messiah or not? And he says, I've been telling you. I've been declaring it over and over again by my works. Everything that I've been doing has been demonstrating it is I have established for these last four months in your face pattern 
bonds of authentic God connectedness. Patterns that didn't have words attached to them. You saw what I've been doing. I've been doing God's work. I've been doing God's witness. I've been proclaiming it. My actions are speaking for me. And then he kicks it up to another level. And he says to them, if you and God had a good thing going on, you would have seen that what me and God have is already solid. Jesus is making an important point for you and I to consider today. And I offer it to you for your consideration. Jesus says, all those persons who are attuned to God will recognize God in action. God's actions happen through us, God's people. We will recognize one another's work. We will recognize each other's actions as activities and harmonies with God's will by the actions we do, by the way we treat each other, will demonstrate whose we are. So I don't need to even say, I'm a Christian. I don't need to say that. I love you. I don't need to say that. It's nice to hear, but it's better to see and experience. It's better to see it and experience it. This is work, y'all. That's why I call this a work session. <laughs> because every day, when, when we get into our little snits and our little pickinesses, huh? Come on, come on, I'm just being real about how we are. <laughs> and we have our little attitudes that we'll slide into and 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 then. We'll have these wonderful glowing moments of, of generosity. And we're so proud of those. But what about all that other stuff that we do with and to each other? Day in and day out. Is it reinforcing patterns of love? Is it? Is it? Is it respect? Oh, big one for me. Consideration. You know, come on, David, it's okay to remember to put the toilet seat down. <laughs> <laughs> come on, I'm just saying, you know, I mean, I mean, remember, I didn't I say that in the beginning? It's the little things. Come on, it's the little things. It's, you'll you'll uh, be driving along and you'll be behind somebody and out you'll see the hand go out the window and they drop some kind of a napkin or paper or something. Oh, oh I so want to hit the gas and boy, what the heck did you just do? You know, something. The little things that that make us mindful that that we can be nurturing. Our vertical, our, our relationship with God and God's relationship to us and those relationships we share with one another. This is every day. This, this is 24-7, 365 stuff, y'all, that Jesus is saying. Our actions speak. Don't open your mouth and say something that you know you're not going <laughs> to say it. Don't, don't. Get it. That one everybody jumped on at the beginning. I said, oh, I love everybody. Now you know that was it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, I don't think anybody's stupid enough to say that anymore. I don't think, well, I don't think anybody. But you'll, you, I will hear every now and then somebody will be crazy enough to say, no, you'll love this one. Oh, I'm not prejudiced. <laughs> 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 You hear somebody say that when you go like, ah, yeah, right. <laughs> because, come on, everybody's prejudice. Everybody is. And that's nothing to do with color. Everybody has prejudices. We all do. So why would you deny your...
your own humanity. I mean, we all have preferences and prejudices. That's just the reality of who we are. It's what we do with them and how we handle them and how we control them in our interactions is what makes the difference. We're the ones in control of that stuff. Now, as I wrap up, okay. Okay, so I agree with you. I just, I told you, this is something I want us to take this home with us and really work with it. Uh, the part that gets me excited is how this, this passage in Gospel of John, 10th chapter, ends. This particular pericope ends with Jesus saying, after he makes the clear point about how important his works speak for him, he says, because I know who are mine. And my mind and those who are mine know that they're mine. And no one will snatch them. I and the Father are one. He really kicks it up. He says, and no one will snatch them from my policy. It's good to know you're kept. Mm. Past tense. It's a wonderful place to spiritually, emotionally, psychologically be in a peaceful place of I'm kept. Mm. I'm going to be all right. Whatever I'm going through, God that is in me and with me has demonstrated through action after action after action God's power, love, and providence. And I'm going to be kept. I better stop right there. <laughs> Rejoice in that, my sisters and brothers. That as you and I do the daily work of pattern building, huh? Because that, that's that's really what it is. It's it's patterns of of respect and consideration and authentic love and authentic caring. Every day, everywhere we go, with who and whomever we're with, even the people that push our buttons and work our nerves. Yeah. Especially with the people that push your buttons and walk <laughs> <laughs> That we show whose we are. And that we are confident in our keptness. Would you pray? Oh, how we thank you, Lord. For your love, for your steadfast mercy and forgiveness. For the goodness and the mercy that follow us. For all the ways that you demonstrate over and over again your love for us. Your investment in us. Help us, Lord, to then do it with one another. To demonstrate our love. And not just say it. To demonstrate our caring. To demonstrate our, our compassion. Our forgiveness. Our mercifulness. Help us every day. To be like you. Thank you Lord. For your spirit that strengthens us in this struggle. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Amen.